Workers and businesses impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic are regrouping as the Minnesota economy comes back to life. The state's new budget for jobs and economic development invests significant resources to rebuild and recover. And the chair of that committee, Senator Eric Pratt, joins me in the studio. Welcome. Thank you. In your closing remarks on the Senate floor, you said that you felt proud and privileged to be able to lead in the recovery effort at this point in history. You also said this bill doesn't solve every problem, but that it's a good start. What resources are available to help not only businesses damaged by the COVID-19 shutdowns and restrictions, but also those businesses that were upended by civil unrest? And how do those businesses access the help? Well, thanks, and that's a great question. Uh, I think the, uh, the main part of the jobs bill was what we called the, Re the Main Street Revital Revitalization Act. And that really had two parts. Uh, the first part was a small business grant program that we had, $70 million, going to small businesses that have not received any support uh, in, the, in the last two rounds of, of grants. Um, those grants will range from uh, $10,000 to $25,000. And we know that that's not enough to help these businesses recover from the losses they've had. But what we're hoping is that, uh, one, it helps them keep plywood out of the windows while their doors were locked. Um, but two, as they're starting to ramp up, as they're buying inventory, as they're trying to hire people, maybe to help with the expenses that, uh, that go along with, with getting their businesses back up and running. Uh, the second piece is focused on capital projects. Um, and while it will help Minneapolis-St. Paul, it's really a statewide program. $80 million, that is a mix of grants and guaranteed loans that can be put together in such a way that um, will help uh, bring in manufacturing or childcare or rehabilitate buildings that were impacted by the riots. Um, it really goes across the spectrum. So a broad spectrum of aid available as people move forward. Exactly. Uh, there are also funds available for Minnesotans who lost their jobs during the pandemic. Unfortunately, some of those jobs may not come back. So where can those workers turn for help? Um, so one of the one of the tenets that we have in the jobs committee is to make sure that we're not only preparing people for the jobs of today but for the jobs of tomorrow and what we're hearing is many of the jobs that were lost during the government shutdown um, really um, are not coming back so we have to help people retrain so we invested in a number of programs um, nonprofits that are helping to retrain people in many cases give them a second chance but i would also say uh, unemployed workers should be able to go to the workforce development centers. Every county has one. Um, so there are supports available uh, to help people get retrained to be able to reenter the workforce. Uh, this bill also invests in broadband expansion. I've read anecdotes indicating that the, rem the remote work that was a result of the pandemic um, prompted people to move to places that they want to live rather than where they have to live. Uh, broadband expansion certainly would enable more of that, but what else does broadband expansion do to impact economic growth? Well, you know, the, the world is moving to a digital economy, and um, our small businesses, uh, both in, in rural Minnesota and, and even here in the metro, aren't just competing with the business in the next town. They're competing with businesses in other states and other countries. And so broadband expansion really helps us build an economy that can compete on a worldwide basis. Um, but not only that, you know, I go back, I, I have a background in education, having served on the school board, and really the idea of being able to work from home um, and uh, the distance learning. Um, we need to increase our broadband uh, capabilities to enable those two things. We know people that are, are going to uh, work from home more often. I think that's a trend that's not going to completely change. Um, I think there's gonna be additional opportunities. Even when I was on the school board, we were looking at hybrid learning models where the kids were doing some self-study uh, in some classroom. And so that's gonna stay up. And it's not just rural Minnesota. I mean, even here in the metro counties, we have pockets where we have broadband uh, weaknesses that we have to we have to address but um, really it's looking at uh, having Minnesota Minnesota businesses 
and our Minnesota economy compete on a, on a global basis. You know, and some people have said that broadband is the new electrification. Do you kind of see it that way? I absolutely do. I, I actually made the comment that I, I feel like broadband is the 21st century version of the interstate highway system. Um, the interstate highway system really connected the country, um, allowed for greater transportation of goods and services, and I think we're going to say the same thing with broadband. Some DFLers, including Minority Leader Susan Kent, did not ultimately vote for this bill uh, because of an amendment that was originally supported but then later removed that would require a specific level of training for workers in oil refineries. What's your perspective on this issue? Well, you know, we all want our, our Minnesota workers to have safe workplaces. Um, and I've looked at this, I've looked at this uh, uh, issue a number of, of times. Um, and it's just, there, there are a number of concerns with it. One, um, we're not really sure how it's going to address safety in, in and of itself. Um, and it seemed to be targeted to one specific uh, company, uh, for the most part, that was in the middle of a labor dispute that's since been settled. Uh, two, recently found out that there was a court case uh, dating back to the 90s where a similar apprenticeship requirement was put into place uh, and was ultimately struck down by the state court. And so we have to make sure that um, our, our, work, our workforce and our communities where these refineries uh, reside are, are, in, are operated safely, but yet make sure that um, we're following the law and, and the Constitution and how we implement those programs. But we have a robust Minnesota OSHA system that is supposed to be focused on workplace safety, and I'd like to see the proponents utilize that system where there are deficiencies in safety. Former Senate President, former Lieutenant Governor, and current member of Congress, uh, Michelle Fishbach, recently visited the Northwest Angle, uh, which continues to suffer because it can only be reached through Canada and the Canadian border remains closed. There is something in this bill to help those businesses. What is it? So we put $5 million into economic relief specifically for the Northwest Angle for that very reason, that um, the residents there are effectively trapped in their own, in their own area. Uh, the only way to reach the Northwest Angle is by uh, boat or by plane at this point. And so they've seen tremendous revenue losses in their, uh, in their tourism business. So uh, there's money there to help them recoup some of that lost revenue due to the actions of Canada. Finally, uh, demographers point to labor shortage in the coming years, and technology and innovation continue to change the workplace. What are some of the obstacles that Minnesota still faces in growing the economy and having a robust workforce? Well, um, there's a number of things. As I mentioned, some of the jobs that have been lost aren't coming back. So we have to retrain uh, many of the people who are unemployed into new, into new positions. Um, what we're finding is many of the industries that were most impacted, the workers don't trust those industries anymore. They're afraid they can be shut down. Uh, and they're looking for new opportunities. Uh, I certainly think extended unemployment in some cases um, has led to people not going back to work. But one of the key things and, and one, of the, one of the areas that my committee looks at is removing the barriers to employment. And child care continues to be one of the top areas where uh, particularly single parents uh, have a hard time entering the workforce if their child does not have a safe and quality place to go. And so uh, we increased uh, the amount of money going to uh, child care, uh, not only to uh, affordability and sustainability, but particularly in greater Minnesota, increasing access. Uh, many of our small towns don't have uh, quality child care and recognizing that it's not just center-based child care, but also uh, family child care that we have to support. So uh, I think that's one of the big areas where we're trying to remove barriers to employment. Uh, certainly Launch Minnesota is helping um, uh, promote uh, entrepreneurship, particularly in innovative industries. And so um, we want to continue to foster that as well. Senator Eric Pratt, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.